Julie Inman Grant, welcome to the program. Now, your office's actions against social media platform X, I think it's fair to say, has been closely watched globally. Why have you, in conjunction with your legal advisers, decided to withdraw from the first major test, I suppose, of a reluctant platform to remove violent material when instructed to do so? Well, actually, we are fighting this particular battle on dual fronts. Um, before the AAT, or the Administrative um, uh, appeals tribunal, as well as the federal court. Um, after considering uh, multiple uh, litigations, the prudent use of public funds, and the phalanx of lawyers uh, that uh, X Corp has lined up in the federal court, we thought it made the most sense to t have an independent test and a, of a merits review through the AAT of why we issued the class one notice in the Wakely stabbing, as you recall, which was a violent, high-impact attempted murder, um, which was deemed a terrorist event by the New South Wales Police Commissioner and resulted in a riot. So it was a very serious moment, and my goal in terms of keeping Australians safer online is to act as quickly as we can when something like that is live-streamed and try to stem the virality from that uh, across social media and the Internet. OK. Now, I'm sure people will ask, and perhaps you can explain, what consequences, even if you are successful at the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, what consequences flow there, and would they match what you could have achieved through standing federal court orders on your removal powers? Right. Well, in some ways, through the in interlocutory injunction process, we uh, achieved what we wanted to, and that was to limit the accessibility of that content and prevent it from going viral. Um, I would point out that every other social media company, every search engine, from Google to Microsoft to Meta to Snap and to TikTok, complied with our orders and tried to take this violent terrorist content down. X is the outlier here. Um, we are actually in another court case with uh, X Corp right now for failure to comply with a transparency notice around what they were doing to combat child sexual abuse material. Mm -hmm. We issued them an infringement notice and they have refused to pay that. So that's, we've got five different cases uh, going with um, X Corp right now. They're consistently non compliant. Um, they were non compliant with um, our ask to take all reasonable steps. Uh, to remove the illegal content in contravention of their own policies. So I think these are bigger issues that need to be questioned by the government. I think the Select Committee on Social Media will canvass a number of these issues, as will the Online Safety Act review. So, so much was made about this case had it proceeded further in the federal court, somehow representing a global test of your powers and that of other online safety regulators around the world to have uh, X pulled into line and material taken down. In your own mind, was it ever that? And if it was, how do you answer the charge, which I'm sure will be made, that you have shied away from that? Uh, well, listen, I will go back to December 2021, when the coalition at the time put out a press release explaining why they had given us the novel powers that they did under the Online Safety Act. And that rationale was that the eSafety Commissioner should have powers to remove class one content, so child sexual abuse material and pro-terrorist content, wherever it is hosted. The reason for that is that none of the material that my investigators um, investigate in terms of child sexual abuse and pro-terror content is is hosted here. It's all hosted overseas, mostly in the United States. So the idea of a global deletion or wanting to, you know, globally, um, you know, censor the internet is really a furphy. Um, it's a matter of semantics. The simple fact of the matter is, with all of these companies, they don't have internet infrastructure or servers here. The only way you can remove that content is at uh, at scale 
is at the source, which is on servers in California. And this is something that companies do all the time, including X, on April 17th, when they voluntarily, globally deleted a compilation video of Wakely, of Bondi, and of two um, Victorian police officers being tragically um, run over by a truck. Yeah. So, so again, I, I think the average Australian is with us here. Um, we don't expect to see violent attempted murder videos on broadcast because there have been laws that have been in place that broadcasters comply with. Why do we think it's okay to have that content on the internet, which is available 24-7 to a bunch of overseas companies that have no regard for our children's safety and don't even have age assurance or age verification tools in place. Sure. Now, thank you for that explanation about global reach, because I think you were somewhat constrained previously from elaborating on the reasons why. Listening to your answer there, Julie Inman-Grant, it raises the question because of overseas, overseas storage on services in California, whether you would ever seek again uh, to have globally enforced orders. Well, um, that is the way that the internet works today. Of, of course, New Zealand has similar powers in the wake of Christchurch. The European Commission has similar powers. Germany has similar powers, called the Net DG Bill. Uh, we're not the only country in the world. And I just note that X Corp themselves just sent a transparency report to the European Commission under the Digital Services Act indicating that between March of March of last year and April 2024, they globally deleted 40,000 pieces of Israeli Hamas content and were continuing to take action to remove further content or, or engage in what they call geo-blocking. Mm -hmm. Now, they usually only use geo-blocking in cases where there is hateful conduct, not where there is illegal content. So this is a practice that takes place every day. You didn't see a single one of those other companies, including Telegram and Reddit, cry free speech issues for us asking them to do the decent thing in compliance with their own policies and processes to remove terrorist illegal content that was harmful to users and distressing content you literally cannot unsee. All right. Now, you mentioned the word resources. They're not inconsiderable, inconsiderable when dealing with a multi-billionaire as with Elon Musk. So was legal cost a significant factor in reaching this decision? Well, they did have a phalanx of lawyers and probably the uh, most expensive KC in, 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 in Australia. So, of course, I have to use prudent uh, use of, of, of public funds. I'm also going to court with X Corp in five other cases. So, um, I made a strategic decision to withdraw here. The real questions that I want tested through an independence merits review will be done at the AAT. And it didn't make sense for me to be fighting a battle on two fronts when, let's, let's face it, the war is going to be much longer and more extended. Now, Elon Musk, you will have noticed, took to his platform at one stage in the last month or so. He described you in somewhat personal terms, I suppose, Australia's censorship commissar. How did that weigh with you? Um, well, he issued a dog whistle to 181 million users around the globe, which resulted in death threats uh, directed at me, which resulted in doxing of my family members, including my three children. Um, so I think with great power comes great responsibility. And exercising that restraint in terms of targeting a, a regulator who is here to protect the citizens of Australia um, is really beyond the pale. But it's not surprising, given that we've seen him litigate and target and personally tarnish NGOs, academics, and other researchers that dare to criticize the safety of the X platform. So this is his modus operandi. I will not be cowed um, by those kinds of threats. I'm sure more will come. Um, but I'm here to do the right thing, to keep Australians safe online, to use the powers that I have, and in fact, test the powers that I have. 
And frankly, it's, um, it's, it's a relief to know that the Online Safety Act review has been brought, uh, brought forward. Um, these will ultimately be questions for government about mm. what kind of enforcement powers they want to give us. But this is really an important test case. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear of your experiences, Julie Inman Grant. And you're right, there are further enforcement and penalty discussions that we could have in the future because they'll be swept up in the Online Safety Act review. Can I just close out by asking about an associated but somewhat related development concerning the Platform X. It is under its own rules and with some conditions allowing adult material on the platform. Obviously, entry of a birth date in one's profile is one of the terms and conditions I would suggest perhaps easily circumvented. But does this open the floodgates even further? Is it counter to your efforts to control the spread of sexually explicit material? Well, it's interesting because X Corp made two uh, different changes to their policies. One was actually around violent speech, and the other was around porn. You may know that I, I worked at the um, at X Corp or formerly Twitter between 2014 and 2016, so um, quite a long time ago. Uh, but porn was all over um, Twitter then. Um, so what's interesting there is this policy is actually putting the burden on the users to use interstitials or labels to mark the sensitive media, the same with free speech. But the policy says nothing about how they plan to monitor or enforce whether or not that's done. And I think one of the things that I hope the AAT will get to, but um, also all of these cases that we have before us is, there is so much opacity and inconsistency in, in terms of the way that these companies enforce their own policies consistently. And in, in, until that is an open and transparent process, which I would expect any mm. company that um, espouses absolute free speech, openness and transparency should be a part of that. And there should be steps that are taken by these companies um, to reinforce that where people don't um, label or mark or protect prying eyes from that kind of violent speech or pornographic content, that they will be taking tangible action, but we see nothing about the action they plan to take there.